page 63 romance it's a very famous melody this is a very nice arrangement of it let's take a look at it it's in cut time or tutu time but for the purpose of talking about it and learning it I'm going to put it in 4-4 time temporarily and then after we get it learned we'll put it back in cut time three flats I happens to be in the key of E flat major make sure you can do the scales on E flat major C minor do the advanced four octaves up and down parallel contrary know those scales I want to talk about some things here going on. Let's start with the right hand here. The fingering in the book is wonderful. I like this fingering for the most part. They, they do a lot of the different fingers on repeated note things that I like very much. I don't do it all the time, but a lot of times I do. And this they do that here. So start with the last two measures in the first line. See the double bars? Those first four measures or so is just introduction. Now the piece actually starts. And it's... it's just play all this legato. A three two. I like the fingering. You go ahead and use that. See, I could use different fingers on these repeated notes too, but as I said, I don't do it all the time. This is a fairly slow piece. That's fine the way it is. Just use their fingering. And third line here. Here, make sure you hold these half notes down. We got two voices going on here. Four, five. You can do a four again if you wanted to. Here, I'm recommending a four, five. So now they're doing the four, five. And again, the last line, first measure. Five here. Hold the D down. That that B there is is this uh, last three measures of that page. The B is tied. Hang on to it and just hang. Play all that legato if you can. Those last few measures, those quarter notes, all legato. With, I know the pedal's being used. I don't care. We want to f f try and challenge yourself to get your fingering worked out. You can play this legato on page 64. Again, their fingering is good. So it's one, two. I like this fingering. Then one and two, three. Hold the half notes. If the hand's big enough, you can use a four, otherwise, you've got to slide off. But use four if you can. So, fourth, let's go down to the next line. One, two, three, two, two. Thumb on the C. This puts you in position here for four. And that B flat is tied for the rest of the measure. Hold it down as you play these three quarter notes. And then you back to your theme. Go down to the last line on the page 64. This here. That's not a half note, just a quarter note. Page 65, second measure. I recommend a th third finger on that because th this is the chord, this is the position you're in. You're not using the D, so it's third. And then on the G, a fourth finger. And then here. And second line, the E flat and the A flat are both tied. You hang on. And then again, the D and the F are tied. So you got them all down, and then the... I'll come back to that grace note. Uh, just play it right now without... Third line. Now 
if, if this doesn't work for you, having a thumb on that A flat, then you're going to have to use second finger. And that means third finger on the B. C flats there. I recommend a fourth finger on the A flat there. And then here again, fourth finger. The E flat is tied. And then I'll come back to these last lines when I talk about both hands. Keep this left hand out of the way. It's just a broken chord for harmony, some rhythm. Then go over to the last two measures of that first line on page 63. I do a three on that, and then a, then you then I can do a, a one and a five. I find that an easier fingering than than what they're suggesting. Although you can do what they're suggesting if that's what you want. Just keep in mind this is a different pattern than the right hand is doing. So just. Stay with that pattern. Let's go down to the bottom. The last line on page 63. You're here. One. Thumb here. And that way you're in position. We'll play all this legato. That's a G. And then here. See this? That's just a chord. It's just, just a, a thumb on that. That's how you'd finger it for an arpeggio. So that's fine. On page 64, you got the same kind of pattern you had before. Let's go down to the third line. Your this treble clef. Again, play this legato. Wrist. Now that D is tied for the measure. Hold it down as you play the, all those notes. Or here. You have to adjust the fingering for your fingers. If you got big hands and fat fingers, you adjust the fingering accordingly. Instead of here, you're here. Is all. Last line. Down here, broken chords. Now, fifth finger. This we got to do this sometimes. You have to actually cross over, over the fifth finger. So it's here. You don't necessarily have to connect them. The pedal will help you out. You can do that if you need to. But if you can't connect them, all the better. F sharp. We're just kind of going down. And then down here. Down here, and then here. The pedal helps connect the notes. Do, do what you can. So those last three measures of the first line on page 65 is here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now here, the last measure. If you, you if your hands are big enough, you can stretch that. Not necessary. But I recommend if you do that, put thumb on the G just to connect the notes. Otherwise, you got to go this way. Here. I don't recommend it. Some people do it that way, but I don't. I prefer so I can connect it. I'm just using the thumb to connect it. fingering goes. Let's put the hands together. The beginning is not too bad. It's just quarter notes. out here. So you're holding half notes down but not other half notes. Just be careful on how long you hold each of those notes.
remember that B is tied, or it's tied. You have to work that out. Over on page 64 is similar to this double. It's gone down to the third line on page 64. You're here. So you're one and two and three and four and one. thumb on that so we're here now the D and the B flat are, are tied you're gonna hold them down as you play these quarter notes that's what we want so again it's the third and fourth measure and then you go on Go to the top of page 65. Here. This is like, it's not the climax of the piece, but it's more exciting than anything we've had so far. And you have to do that in rhythm. So it's a one, two, three. Both hands are moving, so you, just, you may have to practice that from here to here. How you figure this is up to you, but and then back up. Now hold hold all these notes down. Well, this is. Watch this, and it's actually a diminished chord. That's what you have C flat. And the last two lines, look out. Here. You're playing basically the same notes or similar notes in different octaves, okay. Now here, this is the last two lines. This next to the last line, four measures over. The right hand gets the first two notes. The stems are going up. And you, you can use two on the B flat if you need to. Here, and then five, one. Connect these quarter notes. And hold the E flat down. And connect all these quarter notes. They're going everywhere. I mean, you just kind of bleh, but work them out very carefully and you'll get them. Now, to shorten this video, I'm going to combine some things together. Otherwise, I like to just take things a little bit at a time. Like next, I would do maybe the, there's not a lot going on in the articulation, so I could do the articulation and dynamics at the same time. It's like it's soft at the beginning, very legato. It's still legato. Can't be too legato with it, but do the best you can. So forth, and the third line down, the tenuto. You can bring those out a little bit. I think that some, from what I've seen, some of these Russian composers, out Marinov or Rubinstein, these are using the tenutos more for stress. Bring them out. It's also to hang on to it. This is. Then they give you an accent. So it's. So these three go on to here is what we want. And you have a day crescendo because this was medium loud. I didn't see that. Diminuending, uh, diminuendoing all the way down to soft. Now you're soft. And there's a, see the phrase is there, the lift up so that, well, that's all one phrase all connected together. Once you, the, it's like taking a breath. Overall, page 64, it's 
same as I don't see a lot going on there. Now you hit the top of the page, you're sort of medium soft to soft in this area. And it poco animato means animated, speed it up a little, just feel it a little. Now you're going to get a little excited and go up to maybe medium loud. Come back down, settle down. Poco all are gone. You're going back down to the tempo. You you slow down. And then all tempo means resume the tempo you had before you changed it, which means before you slowed down. So we go back to the animated thing. We crescendoed up there. You're getting excited. Diminuendo. Slow down, calm down, and now you're back to your all tempo. I think there's a slight error in the music, and I think the poco on a model part is only for this theme. When we go on the third line at the end of it, when we go back to this theme, like you were at the beginning. I think that animato thing, animato thing goes away. You should go back to the, it should say tempo one or something. Your original tempo that you were at, you're not animated anymore. I could be wrong on that, but in my opinion, you would you would do the animated is only for this other theme. And uh, you do that for a while, and then you, at the top of page 65, you're on the, you're, well, at the bottom of page 64, your crescendo, it doesn't say how much. Don't take that crescendo lightly. If you're going to crescendo, it might be every two or three measures at a time. So at the beginning, the last line on page 64, I'm on the soft side here. Now I might come up just a hair, not much. Now about the same or a little louder, not much. About the same and I'm going to gradually crescendo to loud is what I'm the point is you got like a million measures to go from moderately soft or soft up to loud and if you don't pace yourself you're going to be loud within a couple measures and you don't want to do that so as you're changing this the dynamic going up listen to this these phrases and maybe you'll take a phrase or two at one dynamic and then the next phrase or two at a little bigger and the next phrase or two at a little bigger so it's spaced out. Don't get loud until the, to the end there, the last two measures there on page 65. So, and this says crescendo again. I don't know why they're saying crescendo again because you're already crescendoing. I mean, how many times do I crescendo at a time? But, and then you're slowing down. See the retardando at the beginning, at the top there on page 65? So the first line, first measure. Slow down, not much. That's an accent. Accent or not, I think the, the dotted half note should get more stress than the accent, but that's my opinion. little grace notes are very quickly right before, right before the note. Different people will interpret them differently. I can't tell you one way is right, one way is wrong. I was taught to do them on the beat. In, in this measure, this is the third measure of the second line, you can't tell if it's on the beat or not. It's just quick. Some people will do it right before the beat. Some people, I do it on the beat, however you want to do it. I do the grace note with the G, like so. So all this together. If you want to do it before the beat or your teacher tells you to do that way, it's your business, not mine. not how I was taught. So that's what I do. Anyway, I do them all the same. 
And the fourth line down, the first major, this one. So you see the greatest note is tied in. That's important because if it weren't tied, you'd have to play it again. Good luck with that. So I would play it with the here. Now some people might play the, the half, the A flat with it. And just add that one. Or, the, or play it here. It's, a, it's an interpretive thing. How do you want it? The next one's the same thing. I tend to do all of these together. And then you've come back down, you're, you're at sort of a moderately loud, a moderately soft in here. Now you're going to slowly go down to a pianissimo, or piano pianissimo, three P's at the end. Basically you're dying away. So just plan it out. Then slow down, it just gets soft. And very softly, extremely softly, you're practically blowing on the keys here. You have to use the soft pedal to help you out, I suppose you do, but I would prefer that you be able to control your hands and play that. You just stroke the keys, just coming down. Don't come straight down, just come down at an angle and that makes, you see the slower the key goes down, the softer the note. So if you come down at an angle like that, it the, the key goes down slower. It's, and you get a softer, depends on the piano. Different pianos are different, you have to watch out. And on top of all that, they've added pedal. Well, that's not, I mean, it adds color and it helps to connect the notes and so forth. At the beginning, you see the first for the introduction, it's just all one pedal. That's okay. You could take it in two major increments and pedal at two measures at a time, depending on your preference. You have to listen to the sound. We learn it without pedals so we can hear what's going on and then we can tell exactly what the pedal is doing to the sound. So at the beginning it's it's all overlapping or legato. Well it's not legato necessarily. It's overlapping. You push the nose down first and then the pedal. And very soft. And one little thing about using pedal because the first two measures they want soft and the next two is very soft. It's like an echo. And one of the things you can do with the pedal to help bring out the very soft is change the pedal so you lose some of the sound you had originally. And that helps to quiet it down. So it would be like changing the pedal on the third measure. pedaling the whole thing. You lift it up on beat four. You see the effect that has is different than if I were to legato pedal this all the way through here, it would be this way. Lifting up on beat four, it's this. And that's the effect the composer, or at least the arranger, wanted it. And that's what I'm recommending you do. Lift it up on beat four. Don't get in the habit of just always pedaling everything. <laughs> Very unmusical in my opinion. Third line down, we're up here. Again, I'm lifting the pedal up on beat four. Now here, the last line, the second measure, it's different. Watch out here. You don't pedal until you get that. And I would lift it up on the third measure, I lift it up on the first beat here, and then I want to hear the phrase between here and here. I want to hear a little silence here, so I'm going to pedal it accordingly. I lift it up, don't pedal the first beat, and then pedal it after you play the second beat. And don't pedal, that's off, and we lose all that sound. So that last line is that way. Mm -hmm. 
so forth, something like that. And then at the, the last measure there, we want two quarter notes of rest. I didn't put this back in cut time down. The cut time thing is where you feel it in two. Two, one, two, one. Contabile there at the beginning. Legato means connected as best you can. And contabile means singing style. It's, 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 it's a gently. Feel it in two. One, two, one, two. Don't rush it, just feel it in two. See, the beauty of doing it in four, four times so you can get the rhythm. Once you have it to the point where you can feel it, then you put it back in cut time. You're not concerned with counting anymore because now you're feeling it. You can feel it in two. And at the top of page 64, you speed it up a little. It's a little animated here. But again, don't pedal the last beat is all. two measures starting there you got two measures of legato pedal here and then the next line don't pedal the first measure you don't pedal the last beat there and then we go back to our pedal the first three beats and I, I want to hear the hear that. You don't pedal any of that. And then here, we're pedaling this to add color to lead into the next. It's legato. This, connect that. So the last three measures of the third line is there. Now pedal that, and then it's legato to the next measure, and then you're only pedaling the first three beats. Now the last line is legato pedal. We're, get, we're starting to get excited. We're starting to build up in sound here. So all the way to the forte that's coming up, we're going to just let the overtones ring here. like a breath here and then lift up as after you play the fourth beat connect it this is legato here i don't like that but that's what they did and i do connect the half note to the quarter note i don't separate them if you want to separate them you lift the pedal up through this because this is getting excited it's getting loud we want the sound to build up so we're pedaling all the way through there until you get to the last two measures of that this is the climax of the piece right here lift up now we're coming back down and I'd come down to about a moderately loud or so you see the on the last two lines on page 65. You see the all are gone. You're slowing down here. So you hear. Slow down. It just spreads it out or slows it down. Gondo. That's by itself. And then here. And then you pedal all the way to the end here. Just let it ring, and then very, very, very soft. 
and you can pretty much let it. Now I would suggest you let the keys up, leave the hands on the keys, and then slowly lift the pedal up. And just let the sound die away like there's a fermata there or something. There's no fermata in this arrangement, but that's how I would interpret it. That's my suggestion. You interpret it as you see fit or as your teacher sees fit, then make it yours.